Today I want to talk to you about riding Deals Gap, aka the tail of the dragon. If you don't know what this road is, it's a road in the Tennessee, North Carolina border near Robbinsville, North Carolina, that's extremely popular for motorcycle riders. And riders from all over the world and the United States go there to ride almost once a year. It's, uh, it's become quite a motorcycle pilgrimage for a lot of riders. In the tail of the dragon, people throw common sense out the window. <laughs> particular ride that I did a rider that had much more experience than I had and was a better rider than I was as soon as he went into the dragon the first first few turns he crashed and not only crashed but got seriously hurt experienced riders do crash and they don't crash because the road is unforgiving they crash because there's a group mentality that comes from like riding deals gap. Riders see other riders go fast, you want to go fast as well, so you try and keep up with these guys. I go by the uh, idea that if you're riding and you cross the double yellow lane for any reason, I consider that almost as bad as a crash. And at the tail of the dragon, it's extremely important to be in your lane. Never cross over the double yellow lane. And that is because there's so many riders, especially on the weekends, that are riding aggressively and they could potentially go over the double yellow. And there's been cases where riders and drivers have gone over the double yellow and have hit other riders oncoming, like head on. So, that's a particular dangerous situation. So as a rider, when you're riding Deals Gap, what I would recommend is do a test run first, a slow test run, just so you can kind of see what it's like. Very important when you get to Tail of the Dragon to ride it once and back at a very slow speed, just so you can kind of get the feel of the road. Stay in your lane, and I would recommend staying more to the right of the lane instead of the left. Another tip that's almost a cliche at this point, and I tell riders all the time, ride at your own skill level. Don't ride at somebody else's skill level. I've seen riders all the time who don't have that much experience try to follow riders who are very good and very fluid. And when you ride with guys who are very smooth and fluid, even though they might ride slower, oftentimes they carry more speed than what you think they're carrying. And just because they're riding faster and you're not that comfortable yet, you can get seriously hurt just by following them. What I tend to do is, even if there's a faster rider, I'll ride at like 70% of what I'm capable because I want to have some cushion of error in that road in case something happens, in case other cars come in the opposite way or somebody comes up from behind me really fast. You want to be able to kind of maneuver out of their way. Another thing that you can do to ride the Dragon safely is to ride it extremely slow. And ride it extremely slow in the beginning. Make a point of once you get to the road itself, that you're gonna ride it nice and slow and easy. Don't try to keep up with anybody. Ride your own ride all the way to the end and then ride it all the way back at a slow pace. That way you get the feel for the road. Deals Gap is a very short road. It's only 11 miles, so you have to have full concentration all the time. If you're tired, avoid going, going on that road. It's, it requires a lot of concentration because it's very twisty, it's very technical. It requires you to constantly be looking at the road and reading the road 
don't be looking at your GPS or trying to take photos. It's really not a very good place for taking photos. There's very little scenery. Oftentimes, riders will come up behind you and then they can kind of like frighten you a little bit. Some riders have been riding that road for years and years and they're very fast. So you might be riding at your own pace comfortably and then you'll see a rider come up right up against your rear wheel. And try not to be frightened, don't swerve. Just try to find one of the many pullouts and pull over and let them pass. Also, I see a lot of riders at the Dragon riding very close to each other. This is a terrible idea for two reasons. You can target fixate on the rider in front of you. If he goes off, you'll go, go off and crash. And also because you want to have a little bit, you want to have a little bit more emergency space. So if something happens, you don't want to hit the rider in front. You want to be fluid, you want to be smooth. It's more important to be smooth than fast. And it's something that's very hard to explain to new riders because they assume being fast is what the goal is in motorcycling. Wear full gear all the time. When you're riding, you should be wearing full gear, but particularly at the Dragon because the risks are a little bit higher because there's so many people out there. You want to wear full gear. I recommend a full, full helmet that covers your chin and also knee gear, like so pants that have knee protection in the butt as well, a full leather jacket if you have it, full leather suit. That's kind of like what I prefer to ride with anyway. It makes more sense to me to ride full gear than half gear, but you see cruisers all the time riding with nothing but like just jeans and a vest. I don't recommend that at all. These guys, if they fall, they're gonna get hurt. Even if they don't hit the stationary object, they're gonna get tons of road rash and road rash is very painful. The trick to riding Tale of the Dragon is not to ride it during weekends. Weekends is completely packed, especially in the summer. So what you wanna do is ride it during the weekdays because there's hardly anybody on there and you can actually go a little bit faster than you can on the weekends. Make sure that your bike is in good mechanical condition. You don't want to get down there and then realize that your tire is bald. You want to make sure that your brakes, your tires, every single thing about the bike is spot on before you go to the road. There are some bike shops near the tail of the dragon, but they don't stock a lot of stuff. Even the Tale of the Dragon shop at the resort has some bike stuff because they know that people will crash and stuff like that. But I don't recommend you doing the maintenance when you get there. You want to work on your bike at home and then take it there in perfect condition. Now, if you do crash at the Dragon, it's a very dangerous road because there's hardly any guardrails. I think there's no guardrail. So if you go over the mountain, you're going over the mountain and the things that are going to be stopping you are trees. There's been accidents where guys have been hours and hours down there and if your bike and you go over the corner and nobody sees you, you could be there for quite a few t hours and, unless somebody finds you. So very, very dangerous and the closest ambulance will get to you in like 30 to 40 minutes. So it's very, it's a very bad road to crash in. You don't want to crash there. You will get a ticket and you're going to be waiting for quite some time for help if you do crash and you do need help. There's a lot of roads near the tail of the dragon that a lot of people consider much better than the dragon. And you should ride other roads around that area because they are better than the dragon. The dragon has become this resort road that motorcyclists go to, but the Cheryl Hollis Skyway, the Moonshiner as they call it, there's like great roads everywhere in the Smoky Mountains. So if you do go to the Tail of the Dragon, do explore the surrounding area because it's fantastic looking. There are some really good places to stay when you're at the Dragon. You could uh, stay in Knoxville for example, but I recommend people that 
go to the Dragon to stay in Robbinsville, North Carolina. There's quite a few hotels that provide safe parking for motorcyclists and spaces for trailers to be put while you go out riding. There's uh, the hotels give towels for you to wipe down your motorcycle and helmet. So it's really catered towards motorcyclists. And there are um, campgrounds as well throughout that area. You can camp for free in the National Forest or you can pay like $10 to camp at the many motorcyclist uh, campgrounds throughout the area. The thing that I've seen people do is as they're riding around the dragon they'll see a guy taking a photo and that's usually like the photographers that set up in particular corners. What tends to happen is that people target fixate and they can go towards the photographer but generally what tends to happen is that riders will crash because they see the photographer and they start posing for the photographer by riding faster than they're comfortable and as they're passing they will crash a little bit further up from the photographer. That's why there's so many crashes being, you know, being photographed because people do show off for these photographers. And it's become really famous, really popular. I love what they're doing with the entire resort. It's very unlike any other road in the United States. There's restaurants, there's hotels, campgrounds, all of these events happen at the Dragon. Car enthusiasts will hold rallies, motorcycle enthusiasts will hold rallies there. So it's really kind of cool to see a road take a life of its own. The only economy that's happening in that area are these motorcyclists and drivers that come there just for the road. And there are some other popular roads, for example, Route 16, there's 421 that I'm trying to do that but they don't get the amount of traffic that the Tail of the Dragon is. But if you're in the Tail of the Dragon, just go to those roads as well and hit them up. So be safe, enjoy your ride to Deal's Gap, Tail of the Dragon, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.